Hey folks, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com and today I want to show you how I use Lychee Slicer to support the models for my 3D printables Patreon. Uh, I kind of have a habit of making stuff that's hard to print <laughs> or at least um, stuff that requires a lot of supports and a couple months ago I switched to Lychee Slicer. Previously I was using Chit2 Box, Bruce's Slicer and uh, Photon Workshop. Uh, to get everything done, but I found that Lychee makes it all easier and quicker. So uh, I've used it long enough now that I got kind of a routine down, and uh, I thought I'd just share that. It pretty much results in prints that work every time. I, um, they're not foolproof, but I almost always get a good print on the first try. Kitty, you're not helping, Kitty. Okay, here. Go, go away. <laughs> All right, I've got a model loaded up here. This is a plant I'm making for my Patreon this month, a Lepidodendron tree. It's pretty much all overhangs. <laughs> so the first thing I usually do is just uh, see what this auto orient button turns up. Uh, this just kind of searches for a good position for the model that has fewer support points than other positions and it doesn't always get a perfect one this one is not a bad suggestion but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this a little more vertical because I already printed a similar model and several test prints and this turned out better because I know that the shapes all flow up this way and the really big overhangs are gonna be on the bottom I built it that way on purpose um, so next up I go over here to the magic button, make sure audio auto orientation is off. Boy, is that hard to say. And make sure it's on light. And then I just hit I'm feeling lucky to get the first set of supports going on this thing. Okay. Now I go over here to the supports. And I do most of my work with the light supports and I have mine set slightly stronger than the defaults the little higher diameter on the post slightly higher tip diameter slightly longer tip length that's because I use these for pretty much everything and I want to make sure they grab on I did quite a bit of testing to get uh, good settings on these for me and I hope they work for other people they seem to but anyway so we've got the main supports done what we want to go down here is find the islands and on by default it's set to normal and this is what I was using for the first couple months and it'll find quite a few islands there on normal and get done pretty quickly but if you bump it up to detail It'll find quite a few more, even though it takes a while. And I found that using this is kind of one unlock the um, no fault the supports for me, because yeah, it turns up 133 islands now, and it displays them all with these little red dots. But the first thing I want to do is add support to all islands. Make sure my light is selected. I click that, kitty. You're skating on thin ice, buddy. Come on, I'll play with you later. So now I got all but 47 of them. And those ones we're gonna go in and place by hand. And it sounds like a lot, but it, it really goes pretty quick. I'm gonna go up here, support visibility, hide all supports. And that'll let us get a better look at these red problem areas. So now what I do is I go in with my light supports and I just start doing them by hand. A lot of these, you won't be able to get a regular full support onto them. And that's fine. This one you can. See how it turns gray? You got to do a lot of moving around to get at these things. See here, this white part, you can see where the island is. So you want to get a support somewhere in there. There, it just popped in. I can put this light support there. If I just click, now there's one there. Now we're down to 46 islands. 
Now it's not going to be able to get, especially with this model, it's not going to be able to put normal supports on all of them. So what I do now is I go in here and do the mini supports. And these things are awesome. They're like little hair, hair thin supports that you can add pretty much anywhere and you will not see them. Uh, they don't damage your model. They're just really thin. And to get them, you just hold down Control and Alt, click where you want it to start, and then click where you want it to finish. And there we have a tiny little support. And I use, and see here now, this one's ready to print it, put one of those mini supports in automatically. You can see that it's gray and it's ready to go. There's a regular support that kind of comes and rejoins the model. But we like these mini ones. Oh. Now I notice this island is big and extends back here. So I'm going to put another one here. Just to be safe. And I I say better safe than sorry. If, if you're not sure if you need a support there, put one there. <laughs> it just... I, I don't have a problem with little marks on my models from supports. And frankly, I can't see them usually. Uh, the, the way the resin supports release, it's really not a problem for me. So I just load them up. And these mini supports, you'll see how th hair thin they are. So basically, you just have to start digging around in here, getting real up close and personal with your model. I got alt control down. I click to start the support and I click to finish it. Another thing you can do show the supports again. You can connect these little mini supports to the existing supports. This works great on long thin pieces that need to be supported like the edge of a fern or a sword because you can just use these mini supports and just kind of fan them out like fingers at the end of the other supports here's another area that's probably going to need two mini supports because it's so long of an island we don't want that to mess up on us you also have to be careful about where the second the second endpoint of your mini support goes. It's real easy to put it somewhere where you didn't mean to because it's hard to tell where you are. You know, I end up moving the view a lot between starting the first support and ending this, the second point. And you have to keep control and alt held down the whole time. Now this island, this red dot disappeared, but there's still some unsupported stuff right here. You can see how these lines come together. It might print, but I say better safe than sorry. We'll put in another support there. With these mini supports, or with the way that this model is set up, I'm not going to worry about connecting them all to the supports. Because there's just going to be too many of them. And most of them are going to be underneath these leaves or needles or whatever they are. And uh, I can just put them right back to the model with no problems. It's amazing how much of a difference these little tiny things make. I would guess they're about a quarter of a millimeter, 0.2 millimeters maybe, I don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, do the rest like this. I think I've given you most of the little tips that I would have on placing them. See, there's another, I like, if it goes automatic, I like to let it do that. Because then I know the bottom of the support's going to go somewhere good. I don't actually like that one. Be careful when you hit undo uh, on a complicated model with a lot of supports. It might take a couple seconds until you can do something again. And if you keep clicking, you might 
uh, fat finger something. I learned that it's best to just let it finish before you start working again. So I'm already down to 36 islands. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'll go ahead and do the rest of these and show you the, the rest of the process. We'll just do a time lapse, I guess. Now here's here's one that it didn't get. It's not going to get every single island. And I always do a sanity check at the end that I'll go over. But here's, I noticed an island here. You can see how the lines come together and sh snack break off. That white part needs to be supported. So we'll just do it while we're here. So as you get down to the end, it might be a little difficult to find the last few spots. And you can use this show island thing over here to help you. And also, they show up over here on the left. These little red dots are all the problem areas. And this is the one that you just clicked show on. And so that can help you find some of them. Especially on a model like this, it's just crazy. I'm getting better at this already. Mostly just getting familiar with the movement controls and getting using them without thinking. Seven more. Hello, where are you? These ones are going to be tricky. They're all inside. Usually if I can't find it, I take this slice view and put it just up above it somewhere. Sometimes it helps to peek out. These ones are hiding pretty good. Ooh, that one's really in there. Where are you at, buddy? I will get you. Ha ha. Something in my way. Three left. Sometimes when you get inside the model like this, it can be difficult to find a spot that will allow your cursor to be placed because there's geometry in the way here. Boom. All right. So we have every island that it found supported, all 133 of them. My next step is always to add some more supports and these ones aren't really to cover any islands but they're more to keep the models attached to the supports and attached to the plate so it doesn't fall off and this is pretty much the only time I use a medium and I think these are the default 
values for the medium supports in lychee and i always go down to where it connects first to the build plate especially if there's anything you can't see on the model like the base i just load them up put as many as you can fit on there reasonably because there's no reason not to you won't see it and this is going to help keep that model attached in one place and these are medium so they will leave a little bit of a mark on your model so you want to be careful but still get a few of them on there and you want a lot of these or I like a lot of these towards the bottom of the model or where it starts to branch off and there's I think there might be some extra force on the build plate these I consider these to kind of keep everything steady too so uh, that the more delicate stuff at the top is gonna have a better chance of sticking to itself because it will be aligned properly but basically these are just extra supports to keep the model firmly attached okay now I go back down to my lights and now what I want to do is just kind of give everything a sanity check just I go around and I look for any spots where there might be some islands that are forgotten and these little white lines help a lot with that I can just kind of roll it over the model and see where there might be a problem even if there's not an island in it I can see where it kind of widens out. I put one there. No reason not to. Like I said, I like to be generous with my supports because I really am not bothered by the marks. So I'm really just looking at these lines and watching to see what happens and if they widen out or come together into an island I'll put I'll put a I'll put a mark there I'll put a support there you can also do this um, using mini supports the same technique hold control and all and you can go crazy with these mini ones if you want because See here how there's a nice, there's a thicker, a thicker part. I would consider this an island right here, I guess. I just put a thing there. Nope, no reason not to. And I'm not looking to get everything perfect here. I'm just. I just want to make sure I didn't miss any obvious spots and that there's plenty of support evenly spread throughout the model. On these plants I've been making recently, I've paid extra special attention to these spaces in between the, the foliage. It caused a lot of troubles. Mostly not like a problem that would ruin your print, but just a problem that would uh, not give you a perfect print in that area of the model. Maybe leave a little garbage in your in your vat. That's something I worry about more now that I have a that Mono X, Photon Mono X. It's more finicky than the smaller printers, and I make sure to keep that thing super clean. Great printer, but it's I got to be a little more careful. Okay, so now I've got my extra supports on, and I've gone through and sandy checked, found every little island I could find. 
Get some coffee. All right, now we go over here to this magic button. Make sure that this auto supports are off. If it's not and you click this, I'm feeling lucky, you'll just lose all the work you did. <laughs> but we want to optimize the supports and the bracing, so we'll just do that. This will uh, get rid of any extra poles and uh, automatically brace the new supports we added in. Okay, that's it. That is supported. I mean, it, you can barely see it in there, but the last one I did like this, I almost ripped the supports off like Velcro. It, they they came off pretty easy. So let's hope this one is the same. I'll give it a print, and we'll see how it comes out. All right, and here is the print, fresh off the printer. It looks like it printed perfect. I get it out of the supports and we'll see if it did. All right, and here it is, freed from the tyranny of the supports. And it did print basically perfect. I didn't see any mistakes, nothing in the vat. Just like these last two of the same or similar shapes. So there you go. There's how I do supports in lychee slicer. I hope maybe that helped you figure out your own workflow for getting supports on all this stuff. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them. And uh, thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash Don Whitaker. Lots of weird plants and terrain and fractal what you call it. <laughs> uh, see you next time. Bye.